Hey, what's up everyone? Today I got my Kindle Fire review. So the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that it's very cheap. It's only $200, which for a tablet is a good price. But let's talk about the specs. It's got a 7.5 inch screen that is 1020 by 600. It's also got a dual core processor. It weighs about 15 ounces, which is kind of heavy. You can feel it. It's a, it's a solid machine. It has 8 gigabytes of storage. It has about an 8 hour long battery for watching straight video or reading a book or multiple books. It also has Wi-Fi and a mini USB port along with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now let's take a look at this bad boy. It has a very sleek look. It's very it's very simple. There's no there's not too many things on the sides or anything. And it's also kind of solid. It doesn't feel like it's going to break in my hand. The back is very uh attract too many fingerprints like the HP touchpad or anything but yet it's still a nice kinda black that looks very dark and I don't know doesn't wash out my um, complaints are though that it has no volume buttons on the sides which I mean I guess is okay it's more of an e-reader or something but that the speakers are at the top and that the unlock button is actually right here on the bottom along with the headphone jack is at the bottom. And no, this is not upside down because it does not flip over this way. So for anyone who's going to tell me it's upside down, it's not. The other problem is that with the speakers being up here at the top, when you hold it sideways, you only hear it like in your left ear or right ear, which isn't the biggest deal in the world, but it's worth mentioning. That all aside, let's take a look at the operating system and how it actually works. The OS is very sleek, just like the body. It's got quick settings up here at the top, along with it's called Alex's Kindle. It's also got your Wi-Fi strength, your battery, and then along down here it has your favorites. In the middle it's got your recently opened apps. The quick settings is nice. It's got volume right here, brightness, Wi-Fi, a few other things, sync, you know, to sync up with anything you need. But what I've noticed is that the the lock, you know, that's supposed to keep it from rotating, doesn't actually always work when you're inside of an app like Netflix or Angry Birds, or it just doesn't always work, which is kind of the whole purpose of it. But that'll be just be a software fix that they'll fix soon, and I wouldn't be too concerned about that. There hasn't been too many glitches with this, but I do have sometimes a hard time navigating this menu, even though right now I'm doing fine. Um, I don't know why. I just find it difficult sometimes, but I'm sure that's just something weird I'm doing, so I wouldn't worry about that. Now let's look at, take a look at these categories up here at the top, kind of. So we got newsstand, books, music, video, docs, apps, and web. So that's kind of like all your stuff. Let's take a look at books. And so you can see right here, it's got, you can sort them by author, by recent, by title. So you can see how you switch from cloud to device. This basically means that everything you buy on your Amazon account is saved into your Amazon cloud, which is very handy. You know, you can access it then anytime you're logged into a something that has Amazon, like your computer or uh, another app like on an iPhone or something. And the, the device means that you've actually downloaded it to this device. So if I, I've already downloaded these, but you could actually you know, not have all your books on here if they don't all fit. If you have a thousand books or something crazy, you could just choose which ones you want to download. That way, if you're on a plane, you can pick out which ones you want to download, watch on the plane, or anywhere that doesn't have Wi-Fi. And then if you're back in a Wi-Fi spot, you can switch them, or you can read all the other ones. Now, of course, this is the exact same set setup for the music, the apps. They're all the same, but let's go on to the store now. I find that the bookstore sometimes takes a little longer to re uh, load, I take it, because it's like any other app store, or bookstore, digital, you know, source sale place. It works nice, it's sleek, it's not ama anything amazing, but it's, it's usable, it's good, it's solid. The last thing I want to talk about is the web. So the web is supposed to theoretically actually be faster. It's got some server-side rendering, but I have not actually noticed that. That could just be me, but I just feel like it's worth mentioning because they are. It is supposed to be faster with its server-side running, 
And as you can see, it loaded Google fast, but I'm on, I'm on a, I, this is a very fast Wi-Fi, so I would expect it to look, work fine. The browser is nice, it's got tabs up here at the top, it's got, it's got all this going on. It, it's a very, it's a very good browser, I don't have any complaints about the browser. Now, a few things I do have to complain about is, even though it's a very solid machine, one time when I was playing Angry Birds, it did just kind of freak out on me and I had to like restart the app. But that wasn't the biggest deal in the world. My other, my probably biggest complaint is with the earphones. So I've tried multiple different earphones and I have the same problem with all of them. So whenever it's actually plugged in, no matter what kind of earphones I use, I get this static white noise background. I get that whether I'm just sitting here at the, I don't know what to call this, your home screen, or I'm watching a Netflix or Hulu video, I, you get this slight bit of static white noise. Now, if you have your, you know, music or videos up halfway or more, you're not going to hear it. But if you're in a quiet place and you have your volume down, you're definitely going to hear it. Or if you have your earphones in and you're just reading a book and you just happen to have your earphones in, you will hear it. And that is unusual. I'm not sure what causes that. But that is a little frustrating. Overall, I think it's the best tablet out there for $200. $200 is very cheap for a tablet. Money aside, I would still recommend like a more expensive iPad or Galaxy Tab, but for $200 it's very nice. Now if you're an avid reader and you are getting this primarily to read and you're not going to be using this other stuff, I do not see a particular reason to get this versus one of the e-ink style uh, Kindles that actually like the tech, the e-ink is the ones that are cheaper, like a hundred bucks or even seventy bucks, and it only does books. But the books, the text looks like real text from a book, which is nice if you're into that. But not everyone is. Now that's all my thoughts, and it is it's good for two hundred dollars. But I'll leave a comment down below of what you think of it. Would you get it? Is it is it cheap? Now that's all my thoughts. Leave a comment down below of what you think of it what I left out, what you want to see more of, anything that you have just about this tablet. If you're if you're still interested in buying one and really considering this but still a little hesitant, definitely check out my video, let's say over here, over here, that explains more about Amazon Prime, which is a service that Amazon is offering that I think if you have a Kindle is definitely a good service to get. But anyways, um, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.